If anyone's wondering why there's vaccine hesitancy, look no further than the VAERS reporting system, because many of these people's stories were taking off of social media and censored. There's been serious reports of, of changes in women's menstrual cycle and hemorrhages. Here's 2020 again. That's the same year that emergency use was given for the COVID-19 vaccine. Reports of miscarriage. Ms. Williams, you were right again. Miscarriages increased drastically, but yet no one seems to want to listen to these women. The comments we just heard, I think, speak to a lot of the other comments that we've been hearing in these, um, in these hearings, and that, that is that there is a complete dismantling of what the, and the importance of what vaccinations actually have done in this country and how many lives they've actually saved. Vaccines save lives. The pandemic costs us 1.3 plus million Americans. It's the single largest, most devastating loss of life event that we've Mr. had Chairman, in the modern era. Mr. Chairman. It's, a, it's the most significant uh, uh, yes. loss of life we've had in the I, modern I, era. I'd like, Ms. Reed, please pause for a second. I'd like to make a point of order and ask the members to be reminded of the rules of decorum, Mr. Chairman. I'm sure, um, what, what rules are those? The gentleman from California will suspend. Let's talk about what mandates have done. This is the VAERS reporting system and how many deaths were reported to VAERS by year. The, the blue is all non-COVID vaccine deaths. The red is reports of death related to the COVID-19 vaccine. This is 2021, this is 2022. Here's a comedian, Nick Nimeroff, dead at age 32. He, his, he said, I will not get the third shot, I will not. Pfizer me once, no shame. Pfizer me twice, shame on COVID. Pfizer me three times, shame on you. You want me to get a third shot, what's next? A fifth, no thank you. Then he died, age 32. What about all the athletes? Get your, this Shane Warren, get your double vax and get on with it and learn to live with it. Australian cricket legend Shane Warren dies in his sleep. Um, well, well, that was a lot. Um, I want to just first uh, start by saying that we know that the VAERS system um, should not be used as an unverified way of actually looking at the numbers. And so to, to continue to bring that up as actually a functional way of looking at the impacts of the pandemic is uh, quite irresponsible. The track record on the House Republican side as it relates to uh, this issue in the pandemic has been um, quite shameful. We know that COVID vaccines have saved lives, period, every reputable doctor, uh, this has widely been a um, peer-reviewed, uh, and we know that they have saved lives, and not just the COVID vaccine, it's other types of vaccines as well. And as we've said earlier, as it was mentioned um, by the ranking member, uh, the House majority invited RFK, who as we all know is a conspiracy theorist and a vaccine denier as a leading voice around issues around uh, vaccines and the pandemic here uh, to, to the House. Uh, we know that his opinions have already been discredited and they're dangerous, and yet he is somehow um, someone that is uplifted by the House majority on, on this issue. But beyond that, we know that RFK has made not also racist and anti-Semitic statements, falsely claiming that COVID was, a, was deliberately engineered, and I quote, an ethnic bioweapon targeted to attack Caucasian and Caucasians and black people, and that Chinese and Jewish people are more immune to COVID. So these are the experts that the House majority continue to listen to, and was invited, of course, to appear uh, in, uh, to a House committee. Now, this isn't the first or most dangerous anti-Semitic trope that we have heard. In January 2022, he also said the vaccine requirements are worse than the persecution of Jews like Anna Frank during the Holocaust, which killed 9 million people, including 6 million Jews. And we shouldn't be surprising at this course. We have heard continuous anti-Semitic comments from the House majority. Uh, we have seen this tweet behind us before. Uh, and this person, of course, uh, sits on uh, this very committee who just actually gave some very irresponsible facts uh, to, uh, to our witnesses and the, and the committee as well. But just like RFK and other conspiracy theorists, members of this committee continue and continue to attack vaccines. That we Mr. Have Chairman. In the modern era. Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's, a, it's the most significant uh, uh, yes. loss of life we've had in the I, modern era. Ms. Like, Ms. Reed, please pause for a second. I'd like to make a point of order and ask the members to be reminded of the rules of decorum, Mr. Chairman. I'm sure, um, what, what rules are those? The gentleman from California will suspend. The issues we are debating are important ones. Members feel deeply about them. You do. Everyone here does. Everyone. While vigorous disagreement is part of the legislative process, members are reminded that we must adhere to established standards of decorum in debate. Mm -hmm. Mm 
is a violation of House rules and the rules of this committee to engage in personalities regarding other members or to question the motives of a colleague. Remarks of that type are not permitted by the rules and are not in keeping with the best traditions of our committee. The chair will enforce these rules of decorum at all times and urges all members to be mindful of their remarks. Mr. Chairman, what rule did Does I break? Does the gentlelady from Georgia have any further? Anything for no. Mr. Chairman, the I'm gentleman not may proceed. Thank you. I'm not sure what rule I broke. I actually didn't call anyone out by name and uh, did not actually disparage anyone. Let, let I showed a actual tweet that um, one of the committee members actually tweeted. It's a public statement in the public record, so this is absolutely not disparaging anyone um, unless the committee member wants to retract uh, what was set up here. Um, we, can read, we can read it if we'd like. It says a tweet. It says, vaccinated employees get a vaccination logo just like the Nazis forced Jewish people to wear a gold star. Vaccine passports and mass mandates create discrimination against unvaxxed people who trust their immune systems to a virus that is 99% survivable. So that's actually a public statement. I'm not sure that that is an attack on anyone. I mean, I disagree with it, but that, that's what uh, was, was, uh, was, was said. Let me go ahead and continue. Um, we also know that studies have found that COVID death rates were 11% higher in states, and this is an important point, with Republican-controlled governments and 26% higher in areas where voters lean more conservative. In fact, of the 15 U.S. states with the highest age-adjusted death rates, 13 of them were led by Republican governors during the pandemic. And I say this because vaccine hesitancy actually, and, and causing and pushing folks to not get vaccinated actually leads to higher death, and, th and that is a fact. I want, to, I want to talk about Ron, Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, who's running for president. He, of course, bragged early on about pushing against vaccine mandates, boasted about his record, but we also know that the, the latest medical journal last, just last month attributed over 16,000 needless deaths to his failure to get Floridians vaccinated. They also fell behind the national average throughout 2021 as Governor DeSantis increasingly caved to vaccine skepticism and the constituents paid that price. According to a report in the New York Times, of the 23,000 Floridians who died, 9,000 were younger than 65, despite the governor's insistence at the time that our entire vulnerable population was basically vaccinated, and I end quote. I want to, Dr. Lynch, is it fair to say that, th that vaccine requirements, along with robust public outreach and access to free vaccinations, result in actually higher vaccination rates? Absolutely. And in areas with higher vaccination rates, have we seen lower age-adjusted rates of hospitalization and death due to, the, due to the pandemic? Yes. So it seems fair to conclude that these measures save some number of lives, is that correct? Correct. And is it also true that vaccine, put that, uh, discouraging vaccines and telling folks to not get vaccinated can actually lead to more death? Yes. Thank you, I yield back.